that they're having difficulty with the first layer of the print adhering to the print bed. Or, conversely, they might be having a little bit of warping that occurs, and this can help that out too. Now, there are a couple of users that have found that when they make this solution much too strong and print the first layer way too low, that they can't take the prints off of the glass. It simply works too well. So make sure that you don't stray too far out of the norm, but terrible precision isn't really necessary here. So there's a couple of supplies that we will need. First thing being a measuring cup. Got to make sure it's glass or HDPE though. And of course you can use something like a volumetric flask or a graduated cylinder if you'd like to. One cup or a couple hundred milliliters are plenty of capacity for measuring. But the important thing is that it's a material that does not dissolve in ABS. The second thing that you'll need is a measuring tape. I have a 16 foot long measuring tape that is much overkill for this. Just a regular one foot or you know, half a meter stick is plenty. So in terms of supplies that you'll need for this, there are a couple of things. The very first thing that you'll need is a bottle, because there's not much sense in just making enough to use once when you're doing this. It takes a little bit of time for the ABS to dissolve. So we like to make a solution in batch, put it in a bottle, and use it until it runs out, which should be a couple of months, because this does not take that much. Now you can see this bottle I'm using might not be what you expected, and it's certainly not what I used for making my PVAC solution before. That's because, once again, it has to be a material that is not dissolvable in acetone. So I'm recycling a rubbing alcohol bottle, which is made out of HDPE. The important thing is, once again, that it does not dissolve. Things like uh, canning jars tend to be problematic because the seal on top of them dissolves in ABS. So you might have it cranked down all the way, but then knock the bottle over, and then suddenly you have acetone coming out the side because it's eaten through that rubber gasket. So something made out of HDPE or something with glass with an HDPE top is what you want. Now the second thing that you'll need is ABS filament. I'm using Red Makers Toolworks ABS. Now you can use things like natural or white, but then you can't quite see where the solution's applied. So I find that a bright color like red works best. Of course the downside to that is that you're going to have red on wherever you apply it. So if you spill the stuff, it's going to be noticeable. And it might adhere a little bit to the first layer of your prints. So if that's really a concern, then go with clear or white. But for me, I just want to make sure I can see that it's still there. I care about it working. So I'm going with red. Then the third thing that you'll need is, of course, acetone. You can see I went overkill here and got one gallon or 3.75 liters worth of acetone, which is much more than I need to fill this little bottle. So you don't have to get the same size as me. This only costs me about 20 US dollars at a uh, home improvement store, but you certainly can go with the quart size or quarter liter or half liter, whatever you have available. Though I recommend you stay in the home improvement quality acetone. Don't sort of stray out of that and go to a department store or to a beauty store because the acetone that's used for a nail polish remover tends to be much more expensive and tend to get a lot less for your money. We don't need the purity, we don't need the additives and stabilizers, what have you. We just want pure, straight up acetone. So cheapest here is best. And going along those same lines, getting lab quality acetone really isn't necessary. We don't care for that sort of precision. So with all these things on hand, let's go ahead and start making the solution. It takes a little while for the ABS to dissolve, so the sooner you get started, the better. So let's get started. Work in a well-ventilated area, preferably outside. We recommend wearing nitrile gloves and using eye protection to prevent exposure to spilled acetone. First, take your acetone and pour 250 milliliters, or one cup, into your measuring cup. Be sure to put the top on your acetone after. Then, pour the 250 milliliters of acetone into your bottle. Soon thereafter, make certain that you replace the cap to prevent any sort of evaporation. Take your filament spool and measure 30 centimeters, or 12 inches, of 3 millimeter ABS filament. Snap or cut the filament free and tend to your spaghetti monster of a filament spool thereafter. Snap the filament into a few smaller pieces to make it more manageable. Then, uncap the bottle and drop the pieces into the bottle. Replace the cap on the bottle and shake repeatedly. Alternatively, you can leave it overnight, but we're impatient. 
Once there is no indication of solid filament being present, you're ready to apply the solution. Using a folded up sheet of paper towel, cover the bottle and simply tip it over once. Once is really enough. Then, wipe over the print area and watch as the acetone dissolves and you're left with a foggy coating of ABS on top. Note that if you cover the same area multiple times, all that ends up happening is you take the old stuff off and put new stuff on. So you don't end up doing an additional layer, you just wipe it away and then reapply it. Also note that we recommend users apply the ABS solution on top of PET or window tint film instead of directly to glass to avoid any issues of over adhesion. That's really all there is to it. Generally after every print, it should be visually obvious that some of the coating has been removed, so you'll want to reapply the solution to the bed. Once again, I'm Ryan Turner with Makers Toolworks, and this has been Making and Applying ABS Acetone Solution. If you have any questions or comments, feel free